introduce you to this brother. Again, he has over 60 acting credits. He has over 10 directorial credits. He has over 10 writing credits. And you know him, ladies and gentlemen. I liked him because when he looked at old dude in Diary of the Mate, you are my lawyer. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> he meant that. And then when you saw him on Pride, when he looked at him, oh, it ain't over yet. He meant that. And then on uh, Diary, I mean, what is it? Daddy's little girl. Live, Monty. Live. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a little bit. It, is a, it is my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. The voice of Hollywood with all these credits. He, he's been, in, I mean, you know, I'm a big nerd, so you got Batman Beyond, Justice League, all of that, and Static Shock. I, I don't know why they canceled that. I'm kind of pissed off about that. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary, Anthony, Sturgis, ladies and gentlemen. What it do? What What's it up, do? man? <laughs> sorry about uh, sorry about all the technical difficulties. That's our no, fault. No, actually, actually, I take full responsibility for that because I've never used this service before, so it's all new to me. So you know, yeah, learning curve for everybody. Yeah, because Nicole is. Where is he at? Is he? <laughs> What's know, going on? I just didn't know. I, I didn't know about the community thing. I knew about how to use email, but I'm like, where's this thing he talking about? So I just <laughs> got it. You know, it's the cool thing is there's an app for everything. So right. I just got the app for that. Well, let me before we get started, sir. It is a young lady. Her name is Prudence Sneed. She is my director in the TV series I'm currently cast in called Southern Truths. Could you please put the voice on her and just give her a quick shout out? Uh, hey, how you doing? <laughs> that was the shout out. Uh, I, um, well, you know, shout out to Bruce Green. Am I saying your name correctly? Yeah. Big shout out to you, sweetheart. Um, I'm, I'm honored that you wanted me to even give you a shout oh, out. Yeah. So, you know, shout out to you. So, with all this stuff going on, I see you got one, two, the three things in post production right now. So, you staying busy. I try, man. Um, you know, it's it's a it's an interesting business. You know, you it you you can be in a production for you know anywhere from six months from pre to post to three four years. I mean, like the joint I shot for Lionsgate, um, we shot that in 2015, um, and it was called 2016, right? And it is now currently 2018. Dig it. So you know, it some some things, um, especially when you're dealing with. Um, with the studios and, and stuff like that, some of those things take a little bit longer. The independent stuff, you know, you could pop off, drop off, and, you know, with all the multimedia platforms there are now, you know, uh, like what we're on, you know, you have so many different um, distribution outlets that we didn't have before. So the independent stuff comes out a lot quicker. But the uh, the bigger stuff that I'm trying to do uh, more with the studios, those things take a little time. Even though we put in the can a long time ago, it's a lot of red tape and paperwork. But it's it. coming. You know, we actually wrapping up... Uh, with that project, I don't know what it's going to be called when it comes out, but it's a zombie horror flick that I, I wrote and directed. Um, it was currently called 2016. So I don't know if they're going to keep the title now that, you know, it's 2018, which it really didn't make a difference. It's all about the year the virus started. But it was a cool little project. It was hoping that um, it would get legs and maybe we could turn it into a TV series. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Hopefully you guys are, you know, love it when you see it. It was, it was the biggest movie that I've had the opportunity to direct because it was for Lionsgate. So, right on. Um, it was fun. I, I had fun doing that. So you also have your own production companies too, uh, your own production company too, right? Yes. I mean, a lot of, yeah, I do a lot of independent stuff, uh, especially now I'm starting. I've been writing um, for maybe 25 years, 26 years. Right on. I'm a WGA writer. And... Um, after a while, you write so many projects, you start to say, well, maybe it's time for me to start putting some of this stuff to use, you know. Um, I, you spend so much time doing it and then trying to sell it to other people. So, yeah, I just started my own production company and uh, and started, you know, trying to find financing to get some of these things produced myself. It's something that's power and independent. So right. I'm all about being independent. So uh, don't forget, like, when you get those casting calls, again, I'm a fellow actor, too. You got oh, good to know. See, send me your send me your stuff, man. Yeah. I send you my info. Send well, I only got I, I collect I collect resumes. So you know, I, I, I tell got... people all the time: if you got talent, you know, I'm always open to new talent. You know, in in, in White Hollywood, um, you, you there's so many stars you can't name them. Right. You know, on yeah. Black Hollywood, you can name them all on two hands and a half. Right. And on. and we need just as many opportunities. You know, to not have to see and and that's no shot. That's no knock on the actors. That's that's you know picking up a lot of the work. But, you know, we would like to see more diverse performances. I just saw uh, the show, The Shy. Shout out to whoever produced that. That is I a dope a show. Of... Oh, we lost him. Uh-oh. 
It's okay. We'll call him right back. I think he lost connection because the feed was going a little bit slow. That's okay. Well. Oh, with the, the, the point. It happens, Jenny. That's <laughs> a little south. All right. Yeah, we yeah. we back, sir. We yeah, lost. I'm out, I'm out in the hills, man. I live I live out. I ain't gonna say at the top of the world, California, but there's hills here. So right. you know, sometimes I have a, a bad connection with the signal. That's why I never really be on uh, on video and stuff because the signal be bad sometimes. But yeah, but sorry about that. I was I was just basically saying um, the show, the shy is a perfect example of a show that has a bunch of actors that you haven't necessarily seen a lot. Right. Some of them, you know, more popular than others, but I saw some, some raw talent on that joint, man. That's the kind of stuff that I want to do. I want to, I want to produce and build jobs for folk and, and hire new people and give people opportunities. But I'm going to say this and y'all can see me, I'm going to say this. Um, I, what I don't, what I don't like is because when you say this kind of stuff, all of a sudden, everybody who, who was a fry cook yesterday, decides they're going to be an actor today and hit me up. Right. What, what I do prefer is people who, I respect people who who hit the grind just like I do. If you're willing right to go out here and work for it and get some doors slammed in your face, then I'm willing to give you an opportunity, even if I've never seen you work before, if you're right for a role. Right However, on. for all of y'all on Facebook and social media that keep hitting me up in my inbox saying, hey, you about to make a movie, put me in it. That's the equivalent of me hiring a mechanic to do my brain surgery. You know, just because it looks good. You know what I'm saying? Just because we make it look easy, I promise you, don't try this. It is a lot of hard work. David Blaine, you know, Chris Angel type shit that we pulling off. But people see it and they think, oh, you know, they make it look so easy. So, you know, I want to be on TV. I want to be famous. This is not an easy job. You do what you know. It's not an easy job. It's not. Well, I just, I filmed yesterday. Uh, for oh, movie. congratulations! Yeah, for uh, yeah, I played a detective, but uh, and I actually took some of my people there because like, why are you at set all day? I said, look, they got to get this angle. You may do the same scene six or seven times because they got to get this angle, that angle, right? All of this stuff. It, is- it, it, see, but see, I'm glad you said that for those out there that's that's checking this out. This is the problem with acting that you don't understand. You know, you see it on TV and you say, oh my god, that scene was just phenomenal. If you knew how many times and how many right. angles we shot that same scene. Right. See, this is where most people quit. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, it was exciting. Right. It's going to be dope. See, that's just like when I wanted to be a lawyer back in college. You know, I wanted to be a lawyer because I saw movies. And in the movies, they beat on the table and say shit like, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> and then I went to court because I got arrested for some shit. And I'm like, it ain't like that. You can't say nothing. You can't wear a hat. I'm not interested in this job. It's not like the right. movie. So, you know, we embellish stuff a lot in this business. So. Yeah. But, but yeah, I'm, you know, I'm all entertainment all the time. So congratulations to you on that job, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm always happy to hear that other actors are working. It's hard to get work out here. Well, well, so, yeah. So I, I hire professionals, though. That's what I was saying earlier. Exactly. Don't, don't be hitting me oh. up on Facebook just because you decided at 50 you wanted to start acting. Oh, I'm please, not the guy to start uh, with. He said I would is. fire my own mother, rest her soul. Uh, I keeps it real. Uh, this is my career, not right a hobby. Right. Well, hey, please believe I'm going to shoot you my resume. <laughs> oh, please do. I, tell you, I, I, I look at you work and actor, man. I, and I write a lot. And t- this is another thing you need to know about me for those who know me. Um, if I know you as an actor, if I've seen your work before or if I've gotten to know you as a person, you know, I could pretty much tell. I've been around talent all my life. I could pretty much tell talent when I see it. I met a guy, Paul Elliott. I met this guy at a at a at a party, and there was he had just got to town, wasn't here three weeks. It was something about his energy and his personality. He said, oh, I'm a comedian, you know, I'm an actor, and we talked for hours. When I cast uh people in the movie for 2016, he was one of the first actors I called. You right know on. what I'm saying? One of the first actors I called because and I had never seen him act. I just saw him, he kept popping up at comedy stores here, comedy stores there right. all over America. And I just was like, you know, here's a cat that I'm gonna I'm gonna invest in. And when I tell you this unknown actor, relatively unknown actor, will stand out so much in this movie over guys who have names in this movie, mm-hmm. it's gonna be mind blowing. So I know talent when I see it. So if you got it, send it. But please don't be, hey, you're going to be my first opportunity unless you are super like Beyonce, Will Smith, <laughs> Denzel Washington. Is, you got you to gotta, you gotta blow me away if you've never done this before. It's not to say you can't do it, but I just can't take a risk on you. You know, when I'm putting my projects together, I write some really cool stuff and I, and I like to help build, build some people's careers. But I got to find people that's got the talent. Go ahead, Zig. Uh, so I was looking at uh, your CV a little earlier, and I was, and and you keep mentioning how much you write, and I'm very interested, kind of what the difference is 
in writing your own material versus working in a writer's room? Because I know that you've worked in, I believe, yeah. a, a couple of writer's rooms, and I'm very yeah, interested it's, in Yeah, it's this. different. Oh, I, you know, when, are you a writer? You're, you're a writer? Uh, yes, I, uh, I'm an amateur uh, comedian. It's always been my dream to be so, a writer. So you have room. to write, yeah. exactly. So for me... You said he was in the hills. Damn, yeah. damn, damn, damn. I'll get him right back, guys. I'll get him right back. <laughs> it's like the devil is busy <laughs> trying to disrupt this interview. <laughs> we got to yeah. We got to we gotta shake do. him off. Uh, we got to shake him off. Yeah. Zig right, is on the top. Yeah, yeah. You got to shake to stay warm. Mm -hmm. I know. I think it's because I asked a question, guys. No, I, I don't think, think it's because you asked a question. You broke the internet. The white man broke the internet. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> there you go. Is that the what we're doing tonight? White man always up to something. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I get a cold. I blame it on the white man. <laughs> <laughs> if I wake up in the morning, I stomp my toe. I'm blaming the white man. <laughs> but you know what I'm realizing? Oh, okay. We got him. All right. So we got your back. You got it back. Mm -hmm. Oh, we lose it. We got, oh, got audio. Ah, uh, we're not able to hear you, sir. Hold on, no audio. Uh oh. Shucky ducky. Dun, 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 dun. What? What? I know that Jeopardy sound. <laughs> Which one is that? Mm. Trying to work it out. That's supposed to make you think, right? I mean, not really. All right. That was not on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking credit for that one. <laughs> so, it's all anyway, you know, go modern technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but to answer your question, when I wrote in group, it's different because they'll there's an A story and there's a B story when you write for television, and they'll separate like a couple of actors will go off to write the A story, a couple of actors will go off to write the B story. We'll discuss beforehand. Um, what the story is about and where we're going, you know, so we'll know, well, these characters are going to be in the A story, these characters are going to be in the B story, and we sort of write accordingly. But it's challenging because I remember one day what they would do at his studio was when a person would do something they didn't like, they would give you, they, they would write frowny faces on a sticky pad and sit it wow. in, in, in front of your chair. Because, you know, nobody was cursing and that kind of stuff. So the way they showed displeasure was, you know, when you said something, I cursed a little bit. So when I would say stuff, they just write, you know, these little frowny faces and they stick them on, on the table, you know, where I sit at. So this one particular day, usually I'd have one or two. On this one particular day, we had a big script and we wrote it. And when everybody came together with this stuff, it was about 48, 49 pages. And we had to cut this thing down to about 24, 25 pages, maybe 22. That's a lot of pages got to get cut. So a lot of people's jokes are about to go. Well, on this particular day, I thought I did some good work. One by one, my jokes just kept leaving the table, leaving the wow. table. So every time a joke left, I said some smart Alex shit, and they would put a sticky face in front of my in front of my seat. I must have had about twenty two of them <laughs> to the point that I started to the point that I started giving them their own personalities. I drew beards on some, put arrows through some's heads, you know, put bullet holes in some of them. I just it was a frustrating day for me. So so the, so. If ever put into a group situation, it's challenging in the sense that you have to be. Understanding that for the process, everybody's got to give up something. And when you're the new dude, you're probably going to be the one giving up the most. But it was creative and fun. You know, I, I love working with Steve Coulter and the rest of the writers that was out there. Shout out, Steve. You know, uh, the experience was great because I think it made me a better writer because it, it got me to see how other people write. Right. You know, we all had to collaborate and put ideas together. And it was no longer just my idea from start to finish. I had to collaborate with other brains and we didn't see humor the same. We didn't, you know, you get a sort of a mixed bag of people. There was males, females, you know, white people, black people. So it was a very, you know, mixed bag of people. So everybody had and come from a different walk of life, different age group, different economic situation. So it was a, it was an interesting situation. But I still kind of prefer to write solo because I write really fast and I like to get the idea from start to finish onto paper. So I'm I'm still a solo sort of guy. So you from New Orleans. Born how, and raised. How did you get into all of this? Uh simple story. Um I was in high school, I was in a marching band, a uh, drum major, and uh in my senior year they asked me, you know, to write an essay about what I was gonna do when I got out of school. So I wrote this dope essay about how I was gonna take over Hollywood and all that kind of crap, you know, and my, my English teacher happened to be an actress and she asked me to come to the to the read for a raisin in the sun. So I said, OK, I'll go. I wound up going. And um, I did. I was just supposed to sit there for the table read. 
And the guy who's supposed to play Oscar guy didn't show up and he asked me what I said in the read. I did. And I got the job and I've been acting ever since. How do you, what would you tell people? Because <clears throat> with me, I started off doing spoken word. I did a stage and then I was asked to do a stage play. How would you tell okay. people how to handle adversity when, and then went from stage play to movies then, but how would you tell people? Because there's a lot of people, I think I'm lucky. Because I only got six IMDb credits, but they good IMDb credits. And That's they, all that matters. You got to start somewhere. And they're film. So, but there's a lot of people out there struggling, grinding. And what would you tell them to keep them encouraged in play in things like this? I would say I would say that you have to remember. You have to remember it's a numbers game. You know, if you go to fifty auditions, you may end up just getting one or two jobs. Right. So it's really about trying to get out and be seen as much as possible. It's more than anything, it's a business of relationships. And the best thing to do is to try to strengthen your relationships with those who you can in the industry, which right. means go out to as many auditions as you can. Right. Impress people every time you get an opportunity. Right. And remember, this is a business that at some point you ain't thought about jumping off a bridge or quitting or, you know, screw this, then you're not doing it. So that's all part of the job. You know, being discouraged is a part of the job. So don't take it personal when you don't get the job. But, you know, because that's another thing actors tend to do. You go in there and you say, you know, this is my job here. You say, oh, I prayed on it. Everybody prayed on it. That ain't working. <laughs> At the end of the day, stop all that. I'm, 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 oh, oh, damn. <laughs> man, he's like. Every time it gets good, it's like. We go put we go put Jesus in it. I can name it. Right? I can name it. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. You said he was working, James. Yeah, hey, it's what it is. <laughs> Darn it, man! Dang, we'll get him. I know. Zig is the man. Mm. I know. We're gonna tell him to go to Starbucks or something. <laughs> <laughs> then he'll be on his phone. <laughs> I mean, he's got he's got on the computer. He's got the good reception. But somebody in Starbucks will be able to like. Who are you? And what are you talking about? Hey, we did about? an interview last week. We did an interview last week at a game uh, when somebody was at the national championship game. So, oh, really? On the yeah. phone, Clifton Powell. Hmm. Every time I get on the road, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I we were just road. saying that. It's like the devil. It's like it must be my voice breaking it or something. It's no, it's not that. But <laughs> real quick, is that I see you got all of this work done. Um, yeah. How do you choose your roles? Um. I'm fortunate. Um, I, I've been doing so many other things lately. I don't even have agents at this point. I have a, a manager who's actually my wife. Um, I, I I don't really audition a lot. I've been fortunate enough that people have seen enough of my work that people just find me and call me. I get you know direct calls. I get people call me through my my film company. You know, right. from Facebook. I get job offers from all over the place. Um, I'm reachable. You know, I've, I'm one of those actors that decided I would make myself available. Uh, through social media and things like that. So when you can't find me through my agent, I'm easy to find on Instagram, Twitter, so, you know, all this stuff. I'm on all these these sites and I'm actively on them. So, you know, I just make myself available. Mm -hmm. um, but then when it comes down to the roles, I get, you know, I get a lot of interesting things. I, I think like Denzel Washington, you know, you could build your career so many different ways. I think kind of like Denzel that you pick roles that you can do something with so when people see him, they remember him. Right. You know, every role you do ain't necessarily memorable. Some, some roles are just jobs. Some, you know, and I ain't saying don't take jobs. Take opportunities because you need them. But when trying to build a career the way you're trying to get to something called the A-list, you have to be a little bit more selective in the things that you choose. This is why you don't see me in as many things as you might see other people in. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't always take everything people give me. Because, like, you know, ever since I started playing bad guys, people hit me up. Oh, man, I got this part. It's so perfect for you. Type oh, this is so you. And then I look at the role. It's like a child molester. I'm like, what the hell make me look like I would touch a little girl, man? What about me says that? <laughs> so, so I'm not doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's just so, so I, I turned out at least five roles like that. And they were powerful roles. But the way I am as an actor, if I, um, if I put myself out there like that, People are going to remember that and think, you know, be pulling their right. kids every time they're around me. They already do it since they've seen daddy's little girl. So right. I don't need that in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to uh, be remembered for those type of characters. So you just have to be selective unless you, you know, desperate and just figure, I just want to build a career. I'm going to take every opportunity I get, which is not bad either. Nothing wrong with desperation. It gets right. you far. You work a lot more, but people don't necessarily respect your work because the role suck. But right. that's on you. Well, we talked to Hawthorne. We had an interview with Hawthorne James. Uh, Love you may, Yeah. And so... 
he his big point was you have to have a line that you don't cross. Like he said, he won't say the N-word. He doesn't say it in his personal life. He won't say it on film to anybody. Right. And he does, he'll he never wear a dress. Is that your line? I mean, or what is your line? I, I guess we're all, that's where we're all different. Um, I would prefer... I, I, I That has to be a really bad role for me to put a dress on, man. And too Wong Fu wasn't good enough for me. So right it's got to be some bad shit for me to put a dress on. Um, but but uh, I, don't, I play gay characters and things like that. Those things, real life characters are, are people that represent people we all know and see in modern mm -hmm. day times don't bother me. Right. The line for me, the simple line for me is child molesters. I won't do it. You know, I've, that's the one thing that I've turned down every time I had an offer to do it, no matter what movie it was, be it a big movie or a small movie. It's just a role I don't want to play. I don't want to be, there's nowhere, there's nowhere on earth where there's human beings outside of Bangkok where it's okay to touch on children. Right. So I, I, that's just not acceptable. And I don't want to be looked upon as an actor that plays something so well that people can't forget it, you know, so... That's where I draw the line. I'll smoke weed. I'll cuss. I love cussing. I would do animation. <laughs> I, I ain't going to even lie. I would do animation. And they would be like, you know, well, you know, they would tell you before you get the job. Well, you know, this job comes with, you know, there's, there's language. So does that offend you? And there's a lot of people. Oh, no, I won't do it. There's language. I'm like, she, give me that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so I don't, that don't bother me. You know what I'm saying? I'm all about, uh. <laughs> I'm about what's real. You know what I'm saying? That's why I like the shy and things like that. Cause I'm all, I'm all about what's I real. I love the shy. Yeah. Yeah. Insecure. I, love, I love things that just yeah. real. Insecure. The shy. Uh, insecure is my show. Yeah. I haven't watched oh. that. I heard, I heard great things. Oh, about it's it. very good. It. Yeah. It's a nice show. You should watch okay, it. Okay. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. So you got a new book coming out. Yeah. That's what's going on? Yeah. What's going on with that? Well, I, I sort of, I, I held up the release on it because I was going to send it out myself. And, and then I, I, I did some editing and some, you know, I got some new information I wanted to add to it. So I decided that I'm going to release it close to the summer of this year. I'm still trying to, I'm still working on a publishing deal for it. If not, I'm a self-publisher. But when I tell you, every time I mention it in social media, it's start, my, my, my social media be lit, yo, for real. <laughs> I, it, it, it's just me. It be, because, because it's, it, uh. Uh. I did it again. <laughs> Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. We gonna get it. I that's I think that's I think the We're doing a, I tell you, man, this it's, it's like tea, some, it's some the gremlins tea. or something, man. <laughs> I yeah. think it's just me. Cause yeah, because it's the first time it happened this many times. Oh. Yeah. It's the gremlins. We'll have a, we'll have a conversation. It's all good. But no, I would get gotta get into this book because from what I hear, mm. this book is about to be life changing. For who? For the people who read it. Oh, like, do you know the title of it yet? What's the title? I'm going to let him talk about it and get all into it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That's I'm good. about to drop the title. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, like somebody oh. trying to stop my shameless soul. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was because uh, we were, yeah, they were asking me, what's the title? I said, I'm going to let him get all into yeah, it. Break it down yeah, for yeah, us. I'm, I'm setting you up. See, see but that, I knew there was women on, so that's the setup. You know, right. you got to get like, what is it? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to get them like, God damn it, make him say it. It's, it what, what it is, is called hashtag why he won't marry you oh and oh. every time i post this title in my social media chicks oh. come out the woodwork like why won't he marry me i'm like first of all it's that tone right there you <laughs> tone that down. i can promise you don't nobody want to wake up to that for the next 40 50 years no matter how much you think so so it, it, it started off as a to be honest with you I never wanted to write a book. People would tell me as a, as a screenwriter, you're probably going to write a book one day. And I'm like, there's no topic that's interesting to me. But being that I'm a social person in social media, a lot of people call, come to me with their problems. They tell me all sorts of things that I don't ask to know. But because they feel they can trust me for some odd reason, don't know, I'm just a dude on TV. Uh, but I, I do take people's confidence to heart, but I listen to the things they say. And the things that they talk about most are their relationship problems. And I guess because I've been married 25 years, people feel like, well, maybe you can give hey, me some advice. First, real quick. So, that yeah. is a, in today's day and age, that, sir, is an, an extreme compliment and goal. So congratulations on your 25. I'm at five. So congratulations, oh, congratulations to you, man. Yeah, it's, 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 25. It's, it gets it gets interesting. You know, that's all I can say. It, it gets interesting. Any, anybody, who's ever, anybody who's ever been married, for all of y'all who want to be married, here's a little tidbit for you. You know, it's that you have this dream, this dream of what it's going to be like, this fairy tale wedding, just like your little Barbie dream house stuff with Ken, you know? Oh, yeah, we have Carvettes and it's going to be dope. We have a dope ass house, all that stuff. And then when it don't work out like that, 
you start looking at them like, you know, this is not what I, you know, planned for. This wasn't, this wasn't my vision of how it works. People are going to find out that want relationships. will find out that those of us who are in relationships will let you know it's a job. You know, people think, you know, oh, it's just love and love just carries you through. Life will make love questionable. This show so will. You, so know this, know this from somebody who's been doing it. For, I've been the same person for 30 years. Just know it's one of them situations where, um, Life will, will will do all sorts of things to make you detour from the love that you share with a person and will make the average person do things that they probably wouldn't normally do. We're talking about a long time here. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a short analogy just to give you a little a, a little in, insight of where I'm going with this. If you got, say, um ten kids, right? Right. You love all ten of those kids. Right. Somehow. When it comes to another person, another female, another male, you can only love one of them, just one. Now, how can I have 10 kids and love all of them, but you can only love one other person? It's the rules and regulations stuff that's, you know, set in stone for how we should interact. But then there's the human being aspect of love is something universal. And sometimes, you know, what, what might be cool to you at 22 might not be cool to you at 42. Right on. You know, sure, and it yeah. don't just because you're growing in one direction don't mean that your mate is growing in the same direction. It's two different people. Is that no matter if y'all want all that we won stuff, yeah, that's good. You know, when the sex is good, all that's good. The first you know, first few years, all we popping like young folk. When you're married twenty five years, you don't be thinking about all that stuff no more. You, know, so you, got, you got totally different things. Like you might be like, How often do you have sex? Eh, when I get to it, I got other shit to do. You know what I mean? I, I make this marriage thing seem I've been with her, I've been with I've been with her for years. She know what it is. You know what I'm saying? I know what it is. Yeah, you guys are making no, this seem scary. No, no, see, before we before oh. we came on before you came on earlier, when we were we were ad living, the question was asked about yeah. how many times. Now this young lady here, sex. this is Jackie, she's a model. Uh, and she is actually been in a relationship for quite some time now. I'm like, when you gonna go on to get married, woman? And she was right. sitting up there. She was like, now she now she looked up here. You got her scared now. No, <laughs> no he's scared. No, he's scared. He's if you keep it sexy and you keep it, like, see if you whatever you start doing, I'm gonna give ladies some advice. Didn't I, wait, wait, right didn't now. I just say that? I said that the whatever last you start show. Start doing to get that dude. You gotta, you keep, gotta keep doing it to keep that dude. I'm gonna tell you, if your man is freaky. And you doing some freaky stuff, and all oh, five years in, you decide to be church girl. I promise you, <laughs> you. I promise sir. I, I said the exact you. same I thing. I said the exact same thing. I don't thing. think that's going to change like though. you change. At the end of the day, he gonna be him. And if he told you who he was when you got him, see, exactly. women got this thing they do. Well, hold on now, women got this thing they do. They give you all the stuff you want. Oh yeah, I'm, oh we gonna do this, we gonna do that. Be all perfect. Then they get you married. Then it become water roses. <laughs> I, ain't got I ain't got nothing else to look forward to. Now, see, I look. Ah! Oh. <laughs> look at that. I wanted to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe that. Y'all are making this sound marriage thing sound. It's like, not. We're not making marriage is the most beautiful thing on the face I know. of the planet, but it's work. You have to wake up every day and choose to love that person because some days I know I done pissed off. I done said some. I done done some. And she has to choose to love me. She don't. She is on mornings where I wake up, I have to choose to love her because she done done something to piss me off. I know, but I mean, the whole thing about marriage, I think that's so great. You know that I thought we, was so great. About oh, wait, it. we got we got him back. We got him back. Uh, <laughs> we live in a time. We live in a time where people are so quick when it don't work the way they want. They want to jab to just say screw it. Right. You know th that's the difference between you know millennial love and real love. Millennial yeah. love lasts as long as the check lasts. Right. Millennial love lasts as long, <laughs> as long as the club popping. You know, it just, when people see adversity, that's when they run from the relationship. And this is when your love is tested. You've been in your relationship five years. I can promise you two, three years more in, things are going to come about that's going to start to test your relationship. Hold on. Not with you with her. Well, hold on, sir. We've been married five years. We were separated for two. So see, we've been, and, and there it is. And you know what I'm saying? Right. We, 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 and there it we've is. been back together for about two years, but for those first three, it was real rocky. I get on the show, just be this be name of the show. What the fuck you want? <laughs> right. Oh no, oh no, no. She a cheater. She a cheater. Everybody cheated. She a cheater. Don't date. Yeah. So yeah. Right, right, right. I know. Right. So, but when is this? Okay. When is it coming out? 
Oh uh, well, I'm still I'm still working on the date. I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking more towards the summer because I think that's a time where people vacation a lot, right? And that's a time when people tend to take books and and, and read, mm -hmm. you know, where they go oh, somewhere to some tropical I'm island. I guarantee and think you, about their life. I guarantee you, this title is gonna be. Wait a minute, hold on, wait, what? Yeah, they gonna they gonna yeah, well, but, but but I think let me say this because I, I get this because I'm really I'm really cunning on on social media, right? When I advertised the book last year. I would just drop serious one-liners and just put why he won't marry you. Like, you know, the sex ain't as good as it used to be. Hashtag why he won't marry you. Or, you know. <laughs> you try, or, you, you try you to get hate mail. Too much. <laughs> you bitch too much. Hashtag why he won't marry you. So when women would see it, they would immediately, you know, jump on it like vultures and stuff. And I would just have so much fun with wordplay with these women. But I assure you of this. What I wrote was something that I think will help a lot of women to understand what they might be doing that might be rubbing that dude in such a way that he digger but got her in the, in the girlfriend zone, right. not necessarily the marriage zone. Women, y'all got to remember this more than anything in the world. No matter how much you decide who you want to be with or whatever, that dude got to ask you. You ain't asking him. He got to ask you. So to some degree, you're somewhat responsible for what he has to do to do so. Right. To some degree. You know, I you can't just say, well, it's saying. been seven years. When the hell are you going to do it? <laughs> when you act like somebody he want to marry. Wow. Well, I hate to tell you, uh, yeah, but right. a lot Not of it is on y'all. You mm. have to, there's a time, you know, when a woman, a woman can want a man all day. He's got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is the chick for, for me. me. Right. And just because you cute and got your hair dead and your nails <laughs> done and the dudes in the club think you hot, that don't mean you wife material yet. You know what I'm saying? It's just, just like he might not be husband material yet. That's why some dudes like playing the field. They're not ready yet. Right. Yeah. You're, you're asking somebody to take themselves off the market to the opposite sex for the rest of their lives. And it's long time. Think about that. You're saying for that means you got to be the bomb. Right on. Dudes like sex. You got to be the bomb for dudes, dudes like a lot of sex. I'm just gonna hang up, hang up my balls, man. I'm good. I'm good. I love her. I love her, man. Put him in a mayonnaise. Put him in a mayonnaise jar on the dresser. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just, yeah, just put those, you know, just, just just put those on the dresser, man. I don't need those. But, hey, babe, here, you can have them. No. <laughs> not so w women have to realize there's still a responsibility on your end to show the man that you're the one because he has to ask you. So, you know, you can't just sit up there and just wait for it or, or expect it to happen because you want it to happen. Because let's face it, women are on a different biological clock time than men are Dig it. men will date you men will date you until you die so okay? you're saying we should take action you have as to far take action as... and, 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 but, but listen carefully you have to take action not ultimatum women tend to confuse right. the two right see y'all think action is you gonna do this shit or i'm gonna find somebody else no, 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 because what you just told that man is each and every time he has a problem with you you're going to ultimatum your way to the door right so exactly you can go now we can save ourselves some love. a whole I've bunch of, yep i've yeah. already had it you we can save ourselves some stress right now you can go about your way so so women have to be mindful of, of being more proactive is one thing, but never be ultimatumish. There's nothing right. wrong with being aggressive and proactive. But when you start giving a man an ultimatum, it's like it's like being his mama and boxing him into decisions that he don't necessarily want to make at right. the time. When the time is right, he's going to ask you. Make make the time right. And the time making it right don't mean, you know, it's been two years, Tony. Ah! <laughs> We're going to get him back later. I knew Jeff. it was going to happen. It's like it's hey. a damn time or something. Yeah. I know. It's just like. It's okay. We're going to get through this out. because we still got to talk about his health clinic that he's building, which is, for me, the most impressive thing other than, you know, his career. A health clinic we're at. Well, we finna get into that. Four. Like, yeah, we're going to have to get into that. Jack, now, Jack is up here trying to. So, this what I need to do? No. I, no. <laughs> hey, JP, you out no. there? Hey, dog. No. Look, girl. <laughs> she plotting. She it's, plotting. No, it's a plotting. Setup. It's a setup. No, it's not a setup. It's always a setup. It's always a setup. All right, we. Back. I say guys don't want to hear that shit. Guys don't want to hear. Guys want you to think that's really them. You know, that's that's me right there. That's me right there. It's like you know, you can't be saying this. You it's this you baby. And then two minutes later, well, if you ain't gonna do what I need you to do, then Tyrone cool with it. Really. Yeah. Really? Get with Tyrone. Okay, yeah. Well, you go call Tyrone. Then. You know what I'm saying? Because I I'm not spending the rest of my life with somebody like you. Well, we you know you have to. 
You have to paint yourself in the right light for the guy to ask you. Well, I'm looking forward to the book. I can't wait for it to come out. Me too. Guy's going to love me after this. Guy's going to be like, Gary, <laughs> thanks. Too. Thanks, bro. Because I'm going this, to this, be honest about something, too. One of the reasons why I delayed the book was because after writing it, I thought it was missing something. And and because I had a lot of things, like little things women do that irritate men that might make a guy not ask. I talked about a lot of that kind of stuff. But then I wanted to say, I wanted to tie the book into my own life and show how here's a person that's been in a relationship 30 years, married 25 years, and still throughout the marriage had affairs and things like that. I talk about all that in my book. I talk about my shit in my book. So it ain't a book where I'm just talking about women do this, do this, do this. I actually use... I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I'm because I want to... Part of, part of understanding how this works is after I tell you about how a man perceives something, I show you how in my own life it affected me. You know what I'm saying? How these same things, these same character traits made things happen in my own life and made me make decisions in my own life. So it's not just a book about what women are doing wrong. That's not right. really what it is. Even though, I, even though I advertise it that way for the hype, it's really more about pointing out a few things that women might not be aware of because they think it's cool, but guys don't. But guys ain't really like women and they're going to open up to say it. They just push, freeze your ass away and go about their business. And you don't know why. That's why you see so many women on social media like, I don't know why he left. I know. <laughs> Figure that out. Tell you. Figure that out. Figure that part yeah, out. I'm, I'm going to help you out with that. Uh, well, because so there's things you're doing that you and your girlfriends think, oh, this is cool as fuck. That's not. <laughs> Dude ain't feeling it. You know what I'm saying? They ain't going to tell you they ain't feeling it. It's going to find somebody ain't doing it. So I'm going to help you to know what some of those things are. But in turn, I'm going to open my life up, up to the reader and let them know a bit about how some of these things played out in my own life. And I'm, and I'm pretty candid about it. So this is probably, um, for me, the most open I've ever been for a very direct person. This is probably the most open I've ever been about my personal life. So right. if those who, who pick up the book will not only learn a little bit about what moves men, they'll also learn a little, about, a little bit about how some of the things women do get your man to cheat, get your man to want to leave. You know, you'll learn about that chick too. You know what I'm saying? Right on, when, it actually, right on. when you be called out that, that thought over there, yeah, she's doing what you ain't. So you need to understand, you know what I'm saying? She's doing what you ain't. And though you don't want to hear that from where he's standing, that's good stuff. So I'm going to show you how in my own relationship some of these things affected me. And I think uh, people will understand me a little bit better and they'll understand relationships a little bit better because uh, somehow through all of it, I survived it. That's the, that's the goal. But so, real quick, well, not real quick. I heard that you're opening up a rehabilitation clinic. And for me, that is yes. one of the most impressive things about you because you do the acting, you, you're an author, you're a director. But to me, this is, is this your way of giving back to the community or helping somebody that needs the help? Um, being Southern, I think that's, that's the origin of it is I, I believe in helping people and everybody wants to find ways to give back and help. Um, I have a partner. I got to give a shout out, Kay Harris, the, C the CEO who actually came up with the idea of Bel, uh, Bel Air Health and Rehabilitation. And uh, she asked me to partner with her on it. And I thought it was a, a beautiful thing. I just recently lost my mother uh, to cancer. So, so I was always that. looking for something that I could do um, that would be more serviceable to people. And uh, because she's a nurse and uh, she's studying for doctor and nurse. And I said, well, you know, maybe we could partner up and make this happen. She invited me to the fold and you know, we've been rolling ever since. We're actually going to open up uh, towards the end of February of this year with the first office in Century City. And uh, then we're going to have an you know, a, a actual house where we got people that can stay, you know, for the, for the skilled nursing uh, facility that's going to open up about April. So it's a, it's a, it's a two-office deal that we're doing. And, uh, yeah, it's all about physical therapy, speech therapy, and occupational therapy. Oh, and massage therapy. So we're doing therapy. We're helping people. There's nothing wrong with that. And I thought that was yeah. extremely dope because a lot of people get to a particular point to where they feel guarded, to where they feel like they can't help people because they take advantage of them or whatever the situation is. So big ups to you and tremendous respect for doing Thank something you. like that. I, that, that, that oh, was... I, I'm excited about it, man. To be honest with you, I'm very excited about it because I've, it's a different industry for me. You know, being a businessman, I'm always looking for new industries. So it's a new industry for me, but I have a partner that's so good at what she does that she's making it easy. So everybody just know when you, if you do come to Bel Air, I'm sort of a hands-on COO. I will literally be there from. Uh -huh. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. He's coming back. Yeah, about every five yeah, minutes. About, yeah. yeah, about every five minutes. Guess this, uh, got to check that. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see. We might have to go back to Skype. We'll see.
Uh, yeah, like, like, no. No, do yeah, he's like, you can get the finger. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we will, he's we like, will not, guy. we will not uh, regress. You can't what? She can't see. Jack ain't got a glass. Big as her eyes are. You need your seeing eye dogs, Jack. Yeah. Yo, you my dog back there going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it's funny. It's funny because he's sitting in a cage, right? And I fed him and stuff. And I'm like, okay, bless it. I'm about to do this interview. I need you to be cool. And I swear to you, he sat there cool. I say, should I put you outside or I'm going to leave you here? He sat there quiet. I talked to him and everything. I'm like, dude, you got it. You good. And the minute I start working, he starts tap dancing on his crates. Oh, well, so look here. Like, as many, as yeah, many... my dog is trying to upstage me. That's my yeah. dog, bless it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, again, uh, first off, big ups to everything that you got going on. I mean, you're a Thank tremendous you. inspiration uh, to me. Uh, personally, because you know, you you write and then you get the role. You do animation. How did that even start? Once again, another fluky thing that happened in my life. I just I stumbled on the opportunity. Um, I was shooting a movie called Volcano, and somebody called me. For, one of my agents said, "Go and read this um, this promo thing." I ain't never done it before, so I go down to the studio. And I read real fast and run back to set. The one day I get an acting job is the day I get the opportunity of my life, right? I ain't acting months since I've been here. And then, and then I go down, I do this thing, and I wind up becoming the voice of UPN, the network. I, I used to be I the guy that, saying, yeah. coming up next on UPN, the Parkers, Moesha, half and half, one-on-one. -on -one. Really? That was me doing all that right. stuff. So by doing that, I started meeting a lot of animation people, and somebody heard me talking one day and say, ooh, I like your voice. I want you to come and play this bad guy on Batman. It was like a Batman Beyond cartoon or something. Right. So I went in, I did the little bad guy voice. Cobra. You know, they paid me. And then somebody, yeah, then somebody heard that and was like, hey, I got this other thing. I'm doing this Scooby doing a cyber chase thing. So I played the Phantom mm -hmm. Virus on that. Then somebody heard that and was like, you know, hey, I want you to come do this little small part in Static Shock. It, right. was, like a, it was like literally like, a, like, you know, the city's getting torn up and there's like a bunch of people screaming how it wasn't a big part. But I went in there, did it. And while in there, you know, I'm talking, of course, I'm doing the, I'm doing my real speaking voice. I'm like, yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. So they hear me talking like, damn, we like your voice. We're going we gonna to bring you back for something. About six months later, they called me back and had me playing Ebon, which right. was one of the main characters on okay. Static Shock. So yep. it just, I've been so fortunate and so blessed that I just, I just fall into stuff. I had no idea this was, I, I had no idea I'd be doing voiceovers. No idea I'd ever direct. No idea I'd ever write a book or open, you know, a medical facility. I... I'm I'm just living life and and, and and throughout the journey I guess I'm finding I'm finding myself in it. Sir, I need a favor from you. I just yep. need you to look into the camera and say your name <laughs> and tell folks that they're tuned in to the Benet Ember show. Say so, say so was the last part? Okay, if you could just look into the camera and say, Hey, I'm super cool, Gary <laughs> <laughs> and let everybody know that you're too, that they're tuned in to the Benet Ember show. Okay, cool. Hey, say hi to the bad guys, your boy Gary Sturgis, and you're tuned in to the Benet Embry Show. That is what I call completely and utterly dope. So tell people how to get in contact with you. You don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm always on social media. So Facebook is the easiest place to find me. I'm a night owl. I don't sleep. People will tell you I'll be up on that thing 3, 4 in the morning. I'm always reachable there. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, not on them as much, but I check in from time to time. Right you can on. email me at my email, GarySturgis at gmail.com if you want to send me scripts or or your your uh, your, your pictures and resumes, videos. I just you know, did. I, I did file the, all that stuff. During the course of your in interview, I sure did. Tech, 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 tech. There you cool. go. Yeah, I file all that stuff. So, you know. See your stuff. I, I, you know, as I create projects, I'm always looking for new faces and stuff. So I'm all cool with getting that kind of stuff. So uh, y'all know more. I'll be posting more on my social media about Bel Air as we move forward. And uh, check out, I got a series coming out. Yo, there's a new network called um, Urban Movie Channel, which is like the black Netflix. Right I have on. a show coming on there at the end of February, all throughout March, called Fifth Ward. It's kind of like see that. The Shy. Right. It's kind of like The Shy, but set in Houston, you know. So you got to check it out. His nephew Tommy's in it. Uh, Carl Anthony Payne, Maya, it's 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 just Britney. It's an interesting cast, and we got a, a very gritty show, a lot of language, just like that show. And I play a very interestingly different character in this one. I'm actually a dude who's lovesick in this joint. So it's you're gonna get to <laughs> see me. Sick. Yeah, you get to see me do something mm -hmm. different. I'm in a situation where I play a a, a, the, the, a former manager of, of a Zydeco band that that Maya and these other guys was in. 
and she used to mess with these guys but wouldn't mess with me now one of these dudes is dead the other one's in jail and i'm the only option so <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get i'm trying to, and i run a strip club and i'm trying to get maya to fall in love with me but just britney is my girlfriend at the time and they can't stand each other so i'm in this sort of love triangle with them and uh you guys are gonna see a, a more sensitive side of me on this joint so you know i actually <laughs> Oh, oh, damn. Let's get him back. Boy, boy, boy. Boy, boy, boy. This is kind of like, get you right there, and you be like... <laughs> but you're entertained. <laughs> your, your toes curl, and then Right, like... right. Yeah, Wait a minute, I got to go use that. <laughs> Hold on a minute, I got to pee. <laughs> <laughs> you like, man. That happened to me once. Did it? Yes. <laughs> What you have me peeing on yourself? No, no, I didn't pee on myself. Nigga, I was just... <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? Get up. I gotta go to the restroom. It's some of that R. Kelly shit. Like, what? Wow. Some of that R. Kelly shit. No, I... No. Wow. No, I don't do that. Wow. <laughs> Jackie. No. As, as, no. As, as, as Dave Chappelle said. Jackie, wh no. Wh wh how old, how old is, is 14, really? Right, we back. Yeah, we are back. <laughs> okay. I, we were just like, talking. I can't find the button. Yeah, we were sitting up there talking to... Uh, Jackie, who's our standing co-host, she was. I was telling us about. Like a dog while I'm off the air. She was, <laughs> just <taking> no. <laughs> she was telling us about her R. Kelly experience. No, I didn't. Oh my god! Did he pee on you? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, what? Were you? Wait, wait. Were you underage at the time? Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no. no. That never kidding, happened. Just kidding. I love R. No, no. I like teasing. jokes. Don't mind. R. Yeah, we always do. We always don't tease. Don't send your goons. <laughs> don't send your goons. I'm, I'm used, no, no. I'm used to it. I'm used yeah. to it. Especially with these two. But look here, I want for, I want to thank dog. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's he wants up? some attention. Yeah. Yeah, he but, wants some attention. He, 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 I'm going to tell you something. I've been, I've been having this dog for three years, and I swear to you, he don't bark at all. What this kind of dog is shit. it? It's a Siberian Husky. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He's, he's a big, dog. He's a big yeah. guy. I got him in a cage in the next room and stuff. He was all laying there like, like, like the Sphinx a minute ago. And all of a sudden, it's like, okay, you got too much going on in that other room I want in. So, I want to see what's yeah, going on. <laughs> Sir, I, just, I know we have went over your time. But I had to get you in. This has been a dynamic interview. I want to thank you so much for giving us the time with all the tef uh, technical difficulties and everything. Thank you again. I appreciate it. I, but let me thank you guys. I appreciate any opportunity to have the opportunity to talk about what I do. I appreciate you guys giving me the platform. So thank you. Oh, you I can come back. with Fifth Ward inside. U UMC, Fifth Ward, February. Uh, well, you can come You can come back in the time you get ready. You have an open invitation. Okay, cool. And That's I like hope... What I'll do is I'll hit you up when we get closer to the premiere. I love to talk about uh, the show once we get closer to it. Perfect. And you said that network was UMC? UMC, mm -hmm. Urban Movie Channel. Can't Urban forget that if you're black. <laughs> <laughs> Not hardly. It True. is the black net. It's Bob Johnson's new station. Really? So, you know, you know oh, we got to yeah, find it because th this is the first time I've yeah. ever heard of it. I've heard of it before. Yeah, oh, yeah check it out. It's, it's, it's an app for it. Just look it up. Just yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, it'll come up. Yeah. And, and it's all, you know, they got tons of stuff up there. Uh, they're steadily getting new product. I, I see Brian White's got stuff up there. Flex got stuff up there. It's, it's right like on. Netflix for black people. Okay, yeah. cool. Because I've, I mean, I've heard no, wait, of Bob. I want to make sure I'm clear. White people, y'all can watch it too. Right. I'm, not, I'm not trying to ask. It's not, you know, all lives matter on this. On this, yeah. this so just know there's there's all black product on the site. That's right. all I'm trying to get at. You know, if you want to if you want to get your culture on, you culture right. vultures. Go to UMC. Right on. Hey, and don't forget now, when you get some more casting calls, don't forget Somebody about your... Somebody caught that. Yeah. Now, when you get your next casting calls, don't forget about your homeboy now. I already sent oh, you my you resume. Me, you sent me your stuff, right? I already sent it to you. It's sitting Good right stuff. there in your inbox. He wants to make awesome. sure you see that. Yeah, okay? I just want I showed this. Hey, man, I'm trying to. He said he wants somebody to work. Hey. Uh, he got to do you time, place, though. call time. I'm right there. Hey, let me tell you something. I, my, my mom used to tell me a long time ago, closed mouths don't get fed. You did? Don't nobody know what you want to do you unless did. you tell them. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I tell people all the time, yeah, I, I'm a writer. I want to write for you. Hire me. You know what I'm saying? You'd be surprised. As soon as I post it, somebody said, oh, do a budget for me. No problem. I do budgets, scripts, whatever. I'm work for hire. <laughs> no, that's yeah. right. Well, thank you again, sir. We greatly appreciate this. Continued and great success. To, and I'll be looking for you to uh, to hit us back when you get ready to come back and do your premiere. It's already locked and done. I appreciate it. Appreciate the love, y'all. Appreciate right. it. Thank All you. Right. Have, a, have good a good night. night. Have a good night. All right. Peace. 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 <laughs>